So many years ago, circa 1990, I would say, I picked up this little device. This is made by the Portisol Company, which is an Irish firm. And uh, what this is is a soldering iron. However, as you can see, it has a uh, there, there's a uh, vessel here which contains liquid butane. Here's the uh, adjustment for the flame. Is this rotating knob down at the bottom? There's a little bit of heat sink here, and there's your standard plated uh, soldering iron tip. In between, we have a uh, combustion chamber, which is filled with a uh, quartz wool, and the quartz wool is plated with a catalyst. In this case, it is platinum. So what you do is you, uh, here I'll crank the gas flow up all the way, and then we'll turn that on. And there's a little bit of a flint in the lid here. And there we go. You can see that's burning now. I can, okay, I can cut back the, the heat. And in a few seconds, we have enough heat at the tip to easily melt solder. Perhaps a little bit more heat than that. So, and you can see when we close this, this automatically shuts the gas flow off so it isn't uh, burning a hole in your pocket, literally. So this is ideal for working on things like um, uh, cars under the dash or other places like that, like an electric fence controller or something like that, where it is uh, in the field and there's no electricity easily available. Uh, I have found this to be a little bit underpowered if there's uh, a cold wind, which there sometimes is in Canada, uh, blowing. But in general, it's been very reliable for the few times I've needed it. What it doesn't have, what its great downside is, is that this and this are prohibited on aircraft under TSA rules and under most other rules. So, whereas I could buy this at the destination if I was flying somewhere, this not so much. So it's impractical for... Uh, traveling engineer to use uh, in, in on site where there might not be power easily available. That's where this little devil comes in. Do the uh, traditional unboxing here. We have a uh, manual which is nicely printed. Not necessarily uh, perfect from a translation point of view, but there it is. We have a uh, 100 watt rated tip. Now the claim is that this is 100 watts at a um, 20 volt supply voltage. More on that later. Here's the iron itself. And there's a little anodized, machined rest there. And we can just assemble this very quick, quickly. This unscrews here. This threw me for a bit. There's a little part that unscrews there that you need if you want to extend it. That goes in there like that. And then there's a little silicone washer inside there that retains it. And that is the iron. I should say. And that is the iron. Now inside of this we have a uh, 128 by 64 OLED display, a 32-bit processor, uh, a thermocouple temperature monitoring circuit that uses the, uh, the thermocouple that's in the tip, and it has a uh, USB-C interface. Now if I plug that into my USB-C power supply for my Lenovo notebook. We'll see what happens here. Okay, it's requesting 15 volts and it's getting that from the supply. Uh, the Lenovo supply is a 65 watt supply so I, I can't run it at the 20 volts but it's pretty easy to go in here and uh, change the voltage setting 
to 15 volts. So let's go back. Now all we want to do now is to turn this on. So I will just press this button here. See the temperature rapidly starts to increase up towards uh, 450 Celsius is what it's set at. I believe you could set this in Fahrenheit as well, but uh, Celsius is fine for me. Uh, the uh, device also includes an IMU gyroscope, so it can detect when you're moving the iron and using it, and when you're not using it for a set period of time, which you can adjust, it will shut it down to uh, save power and save the tip. There we go. You can see the temperature hardly varies. It's quite a powerful iron. Now let's get a look at what the uh, power consumption actually looks like in this device. Here we have a, uh, a little USB digital tester. This one supports PD, which is the uh, protocol that allows the supply to, to uh, negotiate with the um, consumer of, of, of the power and uh, decide on a voltage. Uh, the old USB, of course, would only supply 5 volts. Now the newer uh, USB PD can supply 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, uh, 15 volts, and 20 volts generally. And that allows a laptop to run off of a USB-C port. So we take this out. USB-C does not seem to care too much about which is input and which is output in this case. So I will plug this in. You know, let's get a little bit closer here and I'll show you the, the display. We'll turn this on. Okay, there you can see it's up to 35 watts or so as the temperature goes up. And on the display there you can see there's no flicker actually in the in the display when you're observing it visually. That's just an artifact of the uh, camera interacting with the uh, multiplexing of the OLED display here. And I see once it gets up to temperature the power throttles back and we've got a nice stable temperature there. So let's disconnect this. So the next question, next question is how accurate is the temperature? And uh, this device allows it to be calibrated. And I used my uh, temperature meter and the thermocouple which I previously checked against other references so I know this is a this is a pretty decently accurate meter so here we go and what I do is I uh, embed the thermocouple which is this tiny bead at the end let's see if we can get a close-up of that focus that tiny bead if that's embedded in solder it'll give quite an accurate temperature reading so let's have a look at this. We'll turn that on and again turn it on. And I will allow this to heat and we'll get a bit of solder at Okay, so we're getting up there. So that's pretty close. I already calibrated this using this meter, so it's not surprising that the two agree. Uh, the calibration procedure is fairly straightforward if you have something like this, and in fact many multimeters have a suitably adequate uh, uh, thermocouple temperature measurement, and they come with a bead thermocouple, so you can do this with many, many relatively inexpensive multimeters. Uh, the uh, initial accuracy out of the box I found to be of the order of 25 degrees Celsius, which I, I think is not great, but uh, it's pretty easy to, uh, to calibrate it. Uh, in the old days we had, let me just turn this off. In the old days we used iron, in fact some of us still use irons like this, and this one is a uh, 
magna stat type uh, controller. So what there is is a uh, you can kind of hear it clicking. This tip, if you look at this up close, has a number in the end of it. In this case, it's a seven. And there's a this alloy is picked so that it has a, a curie point of around 700 degrees Fahrenheit. So that uh, switches a magnetic switch on and off and controls the temperature. No electronics whatsoever. And you had a choice of 600 degrees Fahrenheit or 700 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's a 100F step, which is about 55 Celsius. So uh, an agree agreement or an accuracy of 5 degrees C is pretty darn good in comparison to that. It's really a lot more to do with... Uh, the technique that you use and how you feed the solder in, what size of solder you use, where you hold the, the iron, how big a tip you use, and so on. That's a lot more to do with it than measuring the tip temperature to a tenth of a degree. But it's nice to have a uh, responsive tip that will feed more power almost instantly when there's a demand. And that's where you want more watts and uh, a tip technology that provides lots of heat. So we'll test that in a minute. Okay, this background is a patent for the uh, Portisol iron. I'll put a, a link in the uh, video description to, to the uh, European patent for that. It's, it's kind of an interesting read if you're, uh, if you're into the technical aspects. Now this is a particularly problematic part. It is a uh, BNC right angle connector with a heavy cast housing. And that, that just draws the heat away when you're trying to solder it. So let's try to wet one of these pins with the, uh, with the iron. This is uh, currently about a 35 watt iron. Wow. That is so good. It's the first time I've tried this, to be honest. That is so good. All right. It does not compare with the Magnostat, to tell you the truth. Very impressed. Another nice thing about this iron is that you can use these inexpensive HACO clone tips that you can get from uh, AliExpress and uh, I think Amazon as well and sources like that. Uh, this particular one has a conical tip. There's uh, other ones available that have, uh, this one's a very, very fine tip. Uh, this one has a uh, more of a hoof or if you need to get a lot of energy out there. These ones are standard as, uh, T, they're called T T12 tips. These ones are standard as 72 watts. I can run these at 20 volts with any of my power supplies. So that, that's all great stuff. Now, so far we've replaced a desktop soldering station. Let's just get rid of that. This is a kind of power supply. This one's 66 watts. This particular little device is made by Huawei uh, for their phones, I believe. And uh, it can only supply 66 watts, as it turns out. Um, at least it's only rated to do so in a 230 volt country. And I think it's 15 volts at full current in a, uh, in a 120 volt country. But I can combine that and uh, the soldering iron and get a very compact desktop station. But we still haven't replaced the portisol. So what we have is this little gadget here. Now this is another Huawei product. There are many other suppliers though. Uh, this one is rated is a power bank rated at 12,000 milliampere hours. As you can see, it's very compact. All I need to do is plug in this little purple USB-C cord I got with the other gadget. Plug that into the soldering iron. And voila, 15 volts. I can actually set this to 20 volts. This, this particular source is not as picky. It will supply a little bit over the rated power. And we got soldering totally portable soldering no no necessity for any electrical outlets no cords no grounding that could potentially arc to something which has its pluses and minuses and there is the replacement for the portisol 
And this is going to be a, a companion in my luggage for any place where I may need to do some soldering in the field because this can go on an aircraft and this is less than the uh, watt hour rating. I can carry several of these. It's also allowed on the aircraft. It's clearly marked, which is the other requirement. And uh, between the two, we've got a replacement for this guy. All in all, I found this product to be quite good. Uh, the fact it's it's uh, kind of overkill from a processor point of view, but it's uh, it just works, and you can. I, I almost hate to say this, but the the uh, firmware for this is open source. It's kind of uh, mucky open source, but it is open source. You can go to the uh, GitHub, download it. It's readable. You can there are comments both in uh, English and in Chinese that are that are pretty much the same comment from what I can tell, and you can make modifications. If you don't like the three calibration points that are in there, you can pick other ones. You can. Make whatever modifications you want to that firmware. It's I think it's about sixteen hundred lines for the for the basic program, and there's probably a few other little bits and pieces that are in there as well. But it's not an enormous program. It uh, operates on the Arduino platform, so you don't actually need anything other than a computer that'll run our, the Arduino uh, platform, which is pretty much any computer, and a USB cord that has USB-C at the end and plugs into your computer and you can make whatever modifications you want which is absolutely fantastic so by and large I'm very happy with this I picked this up on uh, singles day which is November the 11th kind of China's uh, uh, Black Friday when they, they tend to give discounts but it's not much more expensive uh, right now I'll put a link to uh, to the particular seller I used uh, there may be other sellers, but uh, I'm, I'm very impressed with this product. I, I can just hope it lasts as long as the Portisol did, which was uh, which is now the order of uh, 40 years or more. Thanks very much, and uh, if you want to see more videos of this kind, uh, you can subscribe. I don't really have a lot of plans to turn out a lot of videos, but... Uh, if there's a lot of interest, I will do my best. There's other ideas for sure. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you later. Speff out. Maybe we need more fuel. Well, that was exciting.